So I know your classes aren't just NLP. You call it creative NLP. Right. So tell me a little bit about that. What's the difference? It's even a, a little bit slightly different from that. I actually call it creative NLP solutions. Hmm. Oh, I like that, adding solutions to that. Yeah, and part of the reason is, I mean, the technology of NLP has been in existence since the early to mid-70s. I didn't invent that technology, and I don't want people to become confused with an idea that I'm trying to present that, it, that it's my creation that I did. Right. And so, for a lot of reasons, I decided to do that to distinguish the differences, because there are definitely some differences. Um, so one of the differences is that, for instance, a lot of the methods that exist in NLP, um, I've had the chance to look at training manuals from a lot of different schools from all over the place, and what I've seen in a lot of them is um, scripts or outlines for processes that are almost the same word for word that they were 30 years ago. And that kind of just drives me crazy because um, partly there's a, there's a certain part of my personality which is such that I'm never 100% satisfied. So everything that I do, certainly everything that I teach, I'm always tweaking. I'm always mm -hmm. updating, I'm always trying to, I'm always asking myself, is there a way to make it either more thorough or more elegant or more direct, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, I'm still teaching a lot of the same technology, but everything that I'm presenting is very much modified and it's always in a state of evolution from its original roots. The other reason that I wanted to call it creative is the idea that even though when I teach it, I have you know, my manuals have, they have actually, pretty much every process has a script and an outline. So, and my idea is the script is, it's a good starting place when somebody's learning a method and they're really not 100% clear about all the steps and how all the steps work and why do all the steps work and so on. But in the training we talk a lot about that because my idea is once you understand how and why the method works, then you can eventually throw the script away and learn how to respond to somebody in the moment because there's going to be right. individual differences for for anything. This person does a belief in this way versus that way. This person has a fear for this because of that. And so there's always these individual differences right. that if you don't understand it enough to be able to adapt it, you know, then it's just a cookbook. Right. I, I, I want people to be able to, to look at that and go, yeah, here's the basic recipe. Now what do I need to do in this situation with that recipe? So part of how I do that in the training is that for every process that's in the manual now, there's a, a page that is how and why it works and when to use it. So we talk about that for every process that I teach now so that people have that. They can always go back and refer to that and go, oh, okay, that's it and kind of reconnect back to it. I still do that sometimes. I'll pull out the book and, and be going through my process. Oh yeah, this is really good for this. And, and, and right. so I'm constantly looking back through to the top where you would kind of explain what the process is good for. Cause right, and especially if you it. haven't used it in a yeah, while. Exactly. Because there's certain methods you may not use it for six months and then, but when you need it, that's what you really need. It's like, okay, well it's been a while. I need to look at that. So yeah, yeah, even more than what's that little paragraph at the top of a script, now there's a whole, it's usually a page, sometimes a page and a half that's at the end of it that is the, mm. that's very in-depth of how it works, why it works, and, and when to use it. And I know for students that, that was always the big The thing. big question. The big question is how do I know when to use this and how do I know when to use that? And, and, and right, so and that's, that's why so I started, helpful. that's why I began to incorporate that into the manuals. What about, I know that one thing that seemed really creative about your NLP class to me is that you started using some trance, some inductions, mm -hmm. which I know in normal NLP, or normal, whatever that means, in other NLP, they don't really use inductions, it's just about... Well, they don't typically eyes. do that. I mean, some of them incorporate more Ericksonian, um, right. you know, uh, trance work, and we do that as well. Although that's limited to the day that we're really focusing on the language patterns and so on. But I incorporate it in some of the other processes just because if you do an induction first and guide somebody into a trance state, the processes that are more in-depth and more complicated and they're going to be in trance a while, it just makes it easier for them to do. So what I've done in recent times with that, it used to be I only taught to hypnotherapists. Right. Now that I'm no longer connected to the, the local school, I'm opening that up to people that are life coaches and other types of healers, counselors, and so on that may not have a background in trans work or hypnotherapy. 
in the scope of what we do, if all we're doing is guiding somebody into enough of an altered state to be able to facilitate a process, we just do very simple inductions. I like to model the methods of a man named uh, Dave Ellman, who taught um, dentists and psychiatrists and doctors back in the 50s and 60s. I know as a client, I love it, you know, it's just so nice to go to, it. just even a, a quick little induction, it's just so nice to go to that place where that analyzing is just not really part of the deal, because we do it all day long, we're always trying to figure things out, so it's so nice to just get that, kind of get that to, out of the way, yeah, just get that out of the way, get the conscious mind, or even know. to just help somebody get into an awareness of what they're feeling inside, or what, you know, be able to listen to an answer from, you know, part of themselves or a feeling or where is that feeling or whatever, you know, to facilitate kind of non-ordinary awareness that we don't typically pay attention to. The trans state is great. Yeah. So I, I want to get back to what this can be used for, like specifically. Um, allergies, um, relationship one, issues. Allergies. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I have some new methods for dealing with allergies that I've uh, been creating. Um, all kinds of self-esteem issues, behaviors, habits, um, we already said all kinds of beliefs and limiting ideas, self-esteem, fears, dramas. phobias, um, and it's also used pretty extensively by some people um, in, with people with all kinds of different uh, learning challenges, um, mm. that kind of thing, like there's an NLP spelling strategy for people that have a hard time spelling. Um, I often work with people that think they have a bad memory and find out they really don't. Uh, and of course it's also used very extensively in business and marketing. In, in my entire life I've never found any other um, work that uh, is more fulfilling than being part of helping people uh, change their lives. Especially when you can see how, how quickly it can happen, that you can literally see it happen in your presence right. and be part of that and know it. Yeah. That's what I love about this, and that's why that's why I like teaching them, teaching it, so that 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 there can be more of that out there for more people, people that I'll never meet, people that I'll never talk to. Last time I taught, I had a lady come from Dubai to learn it, so it's like great. Now there's people in a whole different part of the world that are getting transformations because of what she learned, and I don't even need to know about it except for the fact that I know what's going on and I don't have to do anything else, and yet change is happening in another part of the world that's happening because of something that, that I got to be part of. So where can, when is your next class? I know you're so doing a class. I'm, I'm doing, well, I'm doing one here in Santa Fe in October. It starts Monday the 24th and runs through Saturday, no, Friday, November 4th. And if people want to find out more about the class or find out more about you, do you have a website that they I can do. go to? I do. So the website is called Structures of Healing, and it's .net. Okay? And part of the reason why I called it that instead of having NLP as part of the name is that I didn't want to limit myself in terms of modalities or understandings. Mm -hmm. So that I'm assuming that as, as, as I progress and as uh, time goes on, we'll add other things to that puzzle. But since NLP is so much about understanding the structure of thoughts, the structure of the mind, that part of it made sense to me. Because when you understand that, if you change the structure of something, you change the results that it produces. That's, that's a huge understanding in NLP. If you change the structure of a thought, then it's going to have a different response in your body and you're going to do something different with it. Mm. So it's all, all structures of healing. In, the, in that mm -hmm. sense, I would say hypnotherapy is also another structure of healing that works in a, in a in similar and in also different ways, but it's all part of that same thing. So that's the website, and there's contact information on there. Perfect. So people can find out all about your classes, all about you, and, and can they email? Is it, there's an email address? That there is an email, email address. Email? Excellent. Um, and I'm also in the process of, of potentially setting up that class uh, and taking it on the road. So I'm looking at taking it to other cities, maybe San Diego, maybe San Francisco, or um, Dallas or Austin or you know diff different cities as well because that's another thing that I've always wanted to do uh, mm -hmm. is travel and do it in other places so I meet a whole different group of people that they don't have to you know make expend such an effort to come to me and then I get to be in a new place um, and so 
we're working on that as well. And are these classes certification classes? Like, do people get certified? It depends on what they want to do. So, thank you for asking that. So, there's there's two classes right now. There's for people who have no background at all in this kind of work. There's what I call a Fordic class. I call it foundations. Mm -hmm. So the foundations introduces somebody to uh, first of all, what are the in NLP they call it the presuppositions, which is really the the presuppositions are sort of like the underlying philosophy of NLP. They're the underlying ideas or principles on which the, all the the techniques and language is based. So in the uh, foundations class, they get that. And then we learn basic stuff like rapport and, and ecology and how to know when is a change useful to make or not useful to make and how to know the difference and how to help people access resourceful states and anchor them and, and some basic change processes. So it's, it's a lot in four days. There's a whole manual just for that. The other class is 10 days. That's a full-on certification for uh, practitioner training. Um, for people with no background, they would have to take the foundation class first. Um, and then they do that 10 day and then they would be a certified practitioner. So once they're certified they can do they can do these sessions with their friends they could, this could be like a whole new career for them in 10 days. It could days. be. It yeah. could be, right? Now, I mean people would need to check out in their states is there are there restrictions and so on, but um, NLP is not something that's uh, subject to licensure. You don't have to be licensed to practice NLP. Some states may have some different ideas about what's okay and what's not okay, so people need to check out that kind of thing. But NLP is taught and practiced by quote-unquote lay people all over the world, including all throughout the United States. Yeah, so if you guys want to learn some amazing processes and techniques that you can, again, use on yourself to change thoughts, beliefs, conditioning, traumas, phobias, or use with your friends, or make a whole new career of it, you can get more information about Patrick and his class if you go to structuresofhealing.net. And again, I'll put that across the screen so everybody gets all the spelling on that right. So. And you can reach Patrick about his classes, about his sessions, or just for some information, or just to talk. And thank you so much thank for coming Thank you for having me. I really yeah, appreciate this it. This is so fun. So, I'd like to thank you all for joining us. And have a wonderful me. evening. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.